Hello and welcome. My name is Greg. This is Wirecast in the Wild. Um, Wirecast in the Wild is designed to be a show where we use Wirecast in the wild, in the real world, with no marketing jazz around it, but just share with you some of our experiences um, and let you know the real world experience of using the product and how to work around some of the challenges you might face. Now, today we had our scheduled broadcast today and it didn't go exactly as expected. So I wanted to quickly make this video and upload and share with you what were the challenges and how you might work around them. So number one, turn on your microphones and test them well in advance. Now to try and fit in with multiple time zones, the start time locally here for me was 6.30 in the morning, which is not a really good time for Sydney. So with that in mind, by the time we got my um, co-host Jens on the rendezvous, it was like 10 minutes before go live time. So that didn't really work out as good as it might otherwise work out. We can fix that potentially by either getting on earlier or moving the show back maybe half an hour, which certainly would be my preference for my beauty sleep. So that's number one, audio. Plan, check, test, etc., etc. Number two, we had troubles with, and it's really ironic, we had troubles with the encoder settings. We planned to talk about encoder settings and it actually caused us a problem during our broadcast. What was the problem? So in Wirecast, in the output settings, you can set up a record destination, a record target, and I was recording to disk with MP4, and you can set up your YouTube output independently. Now the mistake that I made was I had YouTube set to 1.25 megabits per second, which is my usual setting that I use for YouTube. For the record to disk, I made a mistake and I accidentally set it to 4 megabits per second, which shouldn't cause a problem, but there appears to be an undocumented feature, for lack of a better word, within Wirecast where if you're using two different outputs with two different bandwidths, it's going to pick the higher bandwidth for both outputs. How did I find that out? Two reasons. One, I was having a look at the statistics within Wirecast itself, and it was showing me that the bandwidth for the output to the YouTube stream was 4 megabits per second, even though it was configured to 1.25. Secondly, I knew that it was failing because YouTube was failing. Um, people who were watching were getting the spinning circle in YouTube indicating a buffering problem. But here's where it gets interesting. Normally within Wirecast, the streaming icon turns yellow and then turns red whenever the RTMP queue size gets too big. Well, in this case, it didn't turn red. It didn't know about the problem. So here was I streaming and broadcasting thinking everything's all right at my side. It must be a YouTube problem with the YouTube platform. Well, turns out that once I had a look at the statistics, it was really, really obvious. You could see that it was sending a larger amount of data than it was meant to. And here's the even more interesting thing. The RTMP queue size was, it, it didn't make sense. I knew based on my available internet bandwidth that it would normally be buffering if I was trying to transmit at that particular bandwidth but the RTMP queue size didn't show any, any problems or challenges, so that didn't make sense. I think the statistics were probably inaccurate for the queue size based on the erroneous settings overall. Something was broken. That's all I need to really say. It was broken in a big way. There's one other problem that I experienced. So once I found that out, I said, okay, let's go and stop the stream and restart it. So I pressed the stop icon on the stream settings and then I went into the output settings and I changed my uh, record to disk down to 1.25 megabits per second and I double checked the settings on the stream output. But what was interesting is that at that point when I saved all of those details it was no longer streaming to the same stream key the existing setting which was still live on YouTube had disappeared from my uh, output settings dashboard. 
So if it's still live on YouTube, even though you press stop in the, um, the Wirecast panel, I don't have auto live turned on in Wirecast. So I should have been able to select that existing stream and continued streaming to that. However, that was not available. So again, an undocumented feature, for lack of a better word, within Wirecast, you can't resume a stream even if it's still live in YouTube. So those are the three problems that happened today. Number one, audio, better planning and better testing. Number two, a problem with Wirecast where if you have different bandwidth settings for different output streams, it's going to pick the largest one, which may saturate your link on the lowest one. And number three, um, if you stop streaming to a destination, you can't restart again even if it's still live at the remote end. So that's a, a challenge and a problem within the Wirecast user interface. Anyway, we're going to come back and try this again, hopefully next week, and we'll get into encoder settings in more detail again. Thanks for watching. Please do hit the thumbs up button and let us know your comments about Wirecast and about streaming in general. Anyway, thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.